Blood Brothers, page 37, the episode known as The Children's Games. <clears throat> so this will link into existing notes on the characters of uh, Mickey and Linda and Sammy and theme-wise to the idea of consequences, the idea of escapism and cinema um, and there'll be a kind of further subcategory to that now which is this idea of games, the idea of childhood as being a sort of rehearsal of adult life but without consequences. So let's begin. The scene fades as the next scene begins. We hear cat guns and the sound of children making Indian roots. The children rush onto the street playing cowboys and Indians, cops and robbers, goodies and baddies, etc. During the battle, Mrs. Lyons exits. Edward remains on stage in the background as though in his garden, watching unnoticed by the battling children. Mickey and Linda in one gang, Sammy in another. Sammy singing a cappella, a kid's rhyme, I got you, I shot you, and you bloody know I did, I got you, I shot you. So here you'll see the link continuing between Sammy and violence, and the reference to shooting, obviously foreshadowing to the ending of the play. Uh, Linda replies, I stopped it with a bin lid. Important idea here, linking to the idea of childhood as the, con as the consequence free zone. Um, we'll see more of that later, so that links to the theme of our consequences. A uh, massive derisive cheers on the other side, music, singing, but you know that if you cross your fingers and you count from 1 to 10, you can get up off the ground again. Oh, it doesn't matter, the whole thing is just a game. Here we are then, key quote, first of all, the whole thing is just a game. Childhood, consequence-free version of adulthood. Again, of course, later we see that that's not the case, because people do get shot and people do die. Now, if you cross your fingers and count from 1 to 10, links to that as well. To continue then, the shooting starts all over again. A kid raps on the door of a house. Linda as a mole, a mole being a gangster's wife or girlfriend, appears. <coughs> kid sings, my name is Elliot Ness, who's famously the, uh, the detective who uh, hunted and found uh, Al Capone, who was a famous gangster in Chicago in the 1920s and 30s. So my name is Elliot Ness, and lady, here's my card. I'm looking for one Al Capone. To his assistants, Matt, check the back, Sarge, you check the yard. Linda, but pal, I told you, Al ain't home. We see the kid playing Al, make a break for it. Ness shoots him like he was eating his breakfast. Okay? Once again, notice the casual approach there to violence. Um, You'll also notice that all these games that they're playing are all influenced by cinema at that time. And cinema, like dance hall, um, represents an escapism from the kind of grind of working class life. So, the kid says, so lady, can I use your telephone? As Ness goes to the phone and orders the hearse, we see Al get up and sing the chorus with the other children. Again, notice the form of death that is sanitised, that is without consequences and of course in contradiction to the ending of the play. They all sing together, but you know that if you cross your fingers and keep count from 1 to 10, you can get off the ground again, it doesn't matter, the whole thing is just a game. So now, the key quotations from earlier are repeated, of course emphasising their significance. So, the kid was, who was playing Al becomes a cowboy. He turns to face Sammy and sings. Again, notice cowboy, influence of cinema. Uh, the kid says, when I say draw, you better grab that gun and maybe say a little prayer, because I'm the fastest draw that man you ever saw. Call up your woman, say goodbye to her, and you know you're going right down there. Again, obviously, casual reference to guns, and so on. As he draws his gun on Sammy, Sammy produces a bazooka and blows it off the stage. Once again, the association of Sammy with extreme violence. They all sing again, the same chorus, the same refrain as earlier. But you know that if you cross your fingers and count from one to ten, and so on. A small group of children become a brigade of U.S. troops. Again, obviously, in front of cinema. Sergeant says, okay, men, let's get them with a hand grenade. The corporal, the corporal says, let's see them try and get out of this. The rest saying he's a hot shot sergeant from the 9th Brigade who's never been known to miss. Sergeant says to the grenade, come on, give daddy a kiss. He pulls the pin and lobs it. Uh, the brigade covers their ears and crouch down. 
Linda catches the grenade and lobs it back at them. Again, notice this kind of cartoonized, con um, consequently attitude to violence. Uh, after being blown to pieces, they get up singing the chorus along with the enemy. Uh, all but you know that if you cross your fingers and you count from 1 to 10, you can get up off the ground again. It doesn't matter how the whole thing's just a game. Um, Sammy comes forward as Professor Howe, carrying a condom filled with water. Um, my name is Professor Howe, and the Z's bomb I hold, it can destroy the hemisphere. I primed it, I timed it to explode, unless you let me out of here. Um, again, Sammy, extreme violence. Uh, they don't, then I suggest you cover your ears. There is an explosion which pops them all. Out of it come the children singing the chorus, um, same as before. Sammy then interrupts the chanting, singing, You're dead, you know you are. I got you standing near that car. Um, again, Sammy the killer, foreshadowing later. Linda replies, But when you did, his hand was hid behind his back, his fingers crossed. So, in addition now to the idea of fingers crossed escaping consequences, you can also add the note about um, his hand was hid behind his back. Again, this idea that you can escape the consequences of actions. Um, if replies, So you fuck off. All the children, apart from Nikki and Linda, point and chant the accusing. Ah! Nikki is singled out, accused. The rest, led by Sammy, suddenly chant at Nikki and point. Oh, chanting, you said the F word, you're gonna die, you'll go to hell, and there you'll fry. Just like a chip in a chip shop, fat's only 25 million times harder than that, and they all laugh at Nikki. Um, Linda moves in to protect Nikki, who is visibly shaken. Now this of course is significant in terms of the character of Linda, because for the first time now we see her role as a kind of protective figure of um, Nikki. Now if we're talking about the way that this novel presents working class life, then this idea that women in a sense pick up the pieces, this idea that women uh, actually have this very important role is something that obviously we'll see explored as this play continues. Um, so key quotation for her character there. She says, well, well, all you lots swear, so you all go to hell with him. Sammy replies, no, we won't, Linda. Why? Because when we swear, we cross our fingers. Nikki says, well, my fingers were crossed. The children bear are saying, no, they weren't. Liar. Come off it. I've seen them. Linda, leave him alone. Again, link back to the idea of her protecting him. Sammy says, um, why? What will you do about it if we don't? Linda, undaunted, approaching Sammy. Interesting to note Linda's courage there as well. Undaunted not frightened of him. says, I'll tell my mother why all her ciggies always disappear when you're in our house. Talking about quotations for Sammy then, linking there to the idea of theft to crime, and also the idea that structurally the nature of his crimes increase as the play goes on. Um, so, uh, Sammy replies, what? And the half crowns. And Sammy suddenly says, come on gang, let's go. We don't want to play with these anymore. They're just kids. The other children fire a barrage of shots at Mickey and Linda before they rush off. Uh, Linda replies, I hate them. She notices Mickey quietly crying. Notice then here as well, we also have, as well as Linda being a character who's a, a slightly apart from the casual violence, but notice how she's also seen as being slightly um, apart from, um, as, a, as a woman, from the nature of this masculine violence that perhaps Russell is criticising here. So she notices Mickey quietly crying. So what's up? Again, link back to the idea of her being concerned. Linda replies. Uh, Mickey says, "I don't want to die." And Linda replies, "But you have to, Mickey. Everyone does." And she starts to grind his tears again. Notice that stage direction there, linking to her concern for him. Um, like your twin died, didn't he, when he was a baby? Because dramatic irony there. See, look on the bright side, but Mickey, when you die, you'll meet your twin again, won't you? Yeah, of course, foreshadowing there, because indeed, when he does die, he does in fact do that. Um, and because of the um, tableau, because of the, um, the, the, the prologue from the chorus, uh, for, sorry, from the narrator, we know that. So it becomes dramatic irony as well. We already know the ending. And Mickey replies, yeah. Linda says, and listen, Mickey, if you're dead, there's no school, is there? See here. Russell again using this idea of the sparse Brechtian technique, even at this moment of real sort of grimness, he's introducing um, light relief uh, through humour there. Mickey smiling says, and I don't care about our Sally anyway. Look, and he introduces an air pistol. 
He thinks no one knows he's got it, but I know where he hides it. Of course, that too, significant. The idea that Mickey has access to this firearm too, that he's led in his approach to violence, is influenced by Sammy. Instead of being warned off by it, he sees it as something to emulate. Um, Linda is impressed by this and says, ooh, give it a go. Mickey, no, come on, let's go get Eddie first. The who, come on, I'll show you. Uh, and that then formed the end of that section with the children's games. As I said, they're important in terms of the characters of Linda and Mickey, and important also in terms of ideas of consequences. Uh, and that is the end of this video.